A craftsman battles for perfection, never willing to give in or walk away. I'm Eric Gorgeous. I built custom motorcycles from the ground up, using the tools I was born with and skills passed on by countless generations before me. I wasn't always a motorcycle builder. I worked nine to five, chasing money and titles, and it nearly broke me. So I threw it all away and started over. I decided to work with my hands to feed my soul, and I've never looked back. I believe there's a craftsman in all of us. Join me on a quest to uncover the skills that built our society, one craftsman at a time. We'll discover what drives the men and women who I call my heroes. We'll learn their craft and maybe even find some inspiration along the way. There's a part of you in everything you do, your legacy, a craftsman's legacy. It wasn't until the 1300s that weight and spring-driven mechanical clocks were invented and the role of the master clockmaker came into existence. Up until the 1800s, master clockmakers relied on their hands to not only build clocks, but also the tools that were used to assemble them. It was regarded as the most technically advanced trade in existence because of the consistent patience and precision that was required to build each apparatus. Historically, the best clockmakers often built scientific instruments, as they were the only craftsmen around trained in designing precision mechanical equipment. By the 20th century, however, the role of the clockmaker changed. Clock parts became standardized and manufactured in factories, reducing the role of the clockmaker. Today, the preservation of the craft comes from the creativity and innovation of craftsmen like Nathan Bauer. His mechanical clocks are not only functional, but incredibly beautiful regulators, and will stand as modern-day examples of an age-old craft. Hey man, I'm Eric hey. Gorgeous. Nice to meet nice you, to man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I love Welcome. your place. Hey, thank you. This is cool. Let's go in and check it out. Absolutely. Welcome to my clock shop. Man, this is awesome. Thank you. How long have you been here? Um, this location's quite new to us, actually. I've been on this uh, property, though, for about 10, almost 11 years. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. But this yeah. building itself is Yeah, new? we just built this um, about two and a half years ago. I've been moved in for about a year now. Can you show me that one? Happy that to. is beautiful. Thank you. Now this one here I made a couple years ago. Um, I made it specifically for an international art competition in Grand Rapids called Art Prize. Oh yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, it's so beautiful and simple. But complex, well, thanks. you know what I mean? Like Correct, yeah. Yeah, it's made up of uh, about 180 individual parts. How long did it take you? Oh, the better part of nine months working on it, weekends and evenings. Oh my gosh, this is amazing work. Just absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. Looks like it's going to need to be wound here pretty soon. I can show you how that works if you What's like. What's mine? Yeah. Let's take the dome off here. Oh, now I can take a closer Even look. closer. So it's wound once a week with a crank. And you just raise the weight up all the way to the top, nice and slow. That's amazing. Yep, the cable wraps onto a threaded barrel. Do you remember the very first clock you ever built? Oh, I had a lot of failed attempts. You did? Correct. Oh, yeah. I think that's good to know, you know, because I think so many people, they, they, they immediately tell themselves they can't do something. Mm -hmm. And they don't even try because they're worried of failure, right? Correct. But yep. failure is a tool to succeed. Oh, absolutely. If you don't yeah. fail, then you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> I, that's what I think. You know what I mean? Like, I, 
If you're not always pushing completely. yourself, you're not trying hard enough. Absolutely right. I fail all the time, <laughs> unfortunately. I like that rhythmic sound. That's so cool. It's nice. It's very relaxing. Were your parents into clock making or watches or anything? Not at all, no. Um, Masters they, of time? No, um, I took a different course. Um, they are um, into uh, publishing children's books. And wow. yeah, yeah, I'm very proud of them. Um, me, on the other hand, I, I was interested in how things work, working with my hands, anything mechanical. How long have you been doing this? Um, I started quite young. I fixed my first clock, I believe I was 11, and um, took it all apart. Parts went everywhere, and <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but I was able to repair it, put it back together, and uh, it's still running to this day on my parents' wall. How did you know to put it back together? I mean, how did you, that's a lot of parts. Uh, it is, um, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I just tinkered, and that's, that's uh, you know, that's the best way to, that I learn is, is hands-on, you know. Um, from there, uh, I was looking for something to do, um, fresh out of high school, and um, I really didn't have a direction. I ended up contacting a local um, jewelry store and uh, just over the phone asked them if they needed help repairing clocks, and they practically hired me over the phone. They were desperate for somebody um, to, to help them repair clocks. And so from there, I did a three-year apprenticeship, um, enjoyed every minute of it, and branched off from there. There's, I've been fortunate enough to work on some very, very old clocks. I mean, clocks that were 200, 300 years old. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to, every clock seems to have a history. I was a little discouraged by the, the quality of clocks, mechanical clocks particularly, being made uh, today. And I was repairing these clocks for people that were practically new. And then I would get into an antique clock and repair it, and it was a joy to work on because, um, you know, it might be 200 years old and still running strong, and you could tell that somebody handcrafted it. And uh, that really inspired me to want to make uh, my clocks to that caliber. You can't go out to the store and buy a replacement part for, for a 200-year-old clock, right. and so I was kind of um, forced into learning how to make my own gears and parts uh, to repair these antique clocks. I ended up making most of my own tools and um, adapting and, and creating my, my own um, workshop just to, to do specific tasks. Um, so that was a real challenge. It took a long time to really figure out and find information on how do I get started. Have you ever had a, a a clock come in for repair that you weren't able to fix or repair? It, it's rarely a question on if, if it can be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually a matter of is it worth repairing, okay. but it's very rare. Just about anything can be fixed. Right, that's yeah. a great attitude. How long before you went off on your own? Um, about three and a half years. Uh, you know, I was ready to, you know, it, per pursue, um, my passion of trying to create my own timepieces, and um, and really, it kind of took off from there. Well, really, I was looking for a creative outlet, and repairing clocks is, is wonderful, and I got to learn about how a clock works, what makes it tick. But I was looking for a, a way to uh, take um, some of my artistic um, desires and incorporate it into some of my own designs and create my own timepieces. So I started doing that probably about nine or so years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Creating your own timepieces. Correct, yeah. Yeah, so I would take apart a clock, find certain things I, uh, that I thought made a clock interesting or a good quality uh, component of a clock, and I would um, you know, make note of that and incorporate that into my design. Do you see yourself as, a, as an artist or a craftsman? Um, yeah, b both. I mean, it's always flattering to be called an artist, mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, both uh, to a certain extent, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, my, uh, 
my parents had, I think, I think it's called an anniversary clock mm -hmm. with the glass dome. Yep. I loved just checking that out as a mm -hmm. kid because you could see all the gears, you could see everything moving oh, yeah. and the yeah. springs and everything. I just thought it was cool, man. You'll notice when, when I show you my clocks, um, they are all what are called skeleton clocks. Okay. Um, a skeleton clock is an exposed gear clock, um, which is completely left open. Yeah. I'd be happy to, to show you what I do, and uh, it really starts with showing you how a clock works. I'd like to know that. Yeah. So we're going to cut a gear, right? That's correct. How do we do that? Well, first, safety glasses. Of course. Yes. And then, really, it starts with uh, gear blanks. And where do you get are, those? Well, they're, they're brass. It's from brass bar stock. Okay. Uh, I picked these up from, um, or I have the, the bar from the local scrapyard. Then you just cut them down on You a... slice them right off, nice and thin. I use a bandsaw. Okay. And this is inch and a half right here. So this is what we're going to make our gears out of. What we're going to do then, is we just slide this onto this little mandrel here on my lathe. Okay. We are just going to clamp it on here, tighten it down. The indexing plate, well, you can't go out and just buy an indexing plate. So I made this here. It has all different uh, divisions and number of holes in it. So it allows you to rotate and cut one tooth at a time. So just for people to understand, mm -hmm. each ring of holes is a different gear set, right? Correct, yes. So, and then what you'll do is you'll just take this, this indexing pin, put it in one hole, you'll cut your gear, and then you'll come back, move this one pin. Advance it to it, the next yep. and cut one tooth at a time, yeah. I can't believe you made that. That's, that's awesome, man. Oh, yeah, it seemed to work really, really well, and it takes all the calculating the math out of it. And then I'm just going to feed it in little by little and keep checking it until I get the right depth okay. of cut. I just keep my left hand right there and I usually feel the back of the pin okay. to control it. And then I just feed it through nice and slow. And I give it a go. Yeah, do you mind? Go for it. And we just repeat this process. How does it, how long does it normally take you? Um, I can do it in just a couple minutes, generally. Yeah? Can we take a look? Oh, sure gear like so. Nice. All right. So you took this and drilled some pilot holes in here, right? Correct. Yeah. And that's necessary to uh, thread the little jeweler's blade up through the gear that we are cutting out. All right. So, and I can show you how that's done. So I just thread it through. Push on the frame, mm -hmm. tighten it down. So it pulls it taut when you You want it nice and tight. Right. Huh. And now we're ready to cut. All right, let me see how it's done. Sure. And I'll go right into the corner and stop. Then I back it off. And I'll be blowing a lot too to get the chips or the dust off the gear. And then I back it off and make a triangle. I always make a little triangle. That allows me to spin my blade and keep my blade right lined up okay. on our pattern. How often do you snap it? those blades? Those, uh, uh, they, 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 they break. I hope this one doesn't break. It's my last one. Uh-oh. I'm just joking. <laughs> Slow down and drops out. Drops right out. Release the blade. Cut number one. Want to give it a try? I do. Do you design these patterns? I do. 
I, okay. I love uh, sketching out and designing spoke patterns. I like symmetry. Um, and so I have a lot of fun coming up with some pretty, pretty ornate and crazy patterns for my gears. As far as I know, I'm the only one that's ever done that to a clock gear. So it's, it's kind of my, my thing. I'm kind of proud of it. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're going to go right to the, the peak of that okay. pattern there. It's looking good. Yeah. Excellent. There it goes. Yeah. And then um, whatever needs to be cleaned up, it can be cleaned up with, with a, a file. file. Mm -hmm. Our gear is really coming along here, man. Look at that. It's turned out pretty nice. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing that, that it's done by hand, you know? So where do we go next with it? A little more... Well, we're just going to kind of clean file? it up with a file. You just want to work it back and forth. And that just cleans up all the edges real nice. Do you work alone mostly? Pretty much, um, other than my wife. Um, my wife and I run the shop. What does your wife do? Does she help you with this? Do you ever make her do the filing? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, she helps in many ways. I mean, I can do anything without her, uh, really. She runs, does the bookkeeping. She also does hand engraving. She does hand engraving? Oh, yeah, yeah. She uh, has engraved a number of uh, things for my clocks. The really? numbers, the dials. Oh, yeah. And yeah, we work together on pretty much every project. So is this gear ready to, to go on a pinion shaft? Is that we are on? ready, yes. Yeah. We, we press it onto a pinion shaft. <clears throat> How do we do that? Well, that I made up ahead of time there. Cool. And that is, uh, pinion is basically the small gear. You made that? Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. So what we're going to do here then, I'll just move this out of the way here. I'm just going to drop that right on there. Right there, it's basically uh, like a punch with a, a hole in it. Yep, just kind of rotate it. Feel solid, and then you know you're there, right? That should be good. So it looks like we have all the pieces to build an amazing clock here. And this gear is the one we made. Correct. Just now, right? And, and we're gonna assemble it now, but before we do so, um, I'm going to show you how to blue the screws in the hands. We start by um, got a setting them plate. on a hot plate, and it is hot. And what do you have on that hot well, plate? Well, I just uh, I laid a, just a hefty piece of brass there, and that just acts as a heat sink, basically, to, eat, uh, to heat up evenly. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to have you do is um, pick up the hands with the tweezers. Okay. Those are... Uh, the top here, hold it right, yeah, somewhere right in the middle, and you're just going to drop it somewhere right in the middle there. All right, put one right there. Perfect. I think it's pretty amazing that there's no chemicals involved. This is no just, chemicals. just heating yeah. up the metal yeah. and, and holding that blue color that you would normally get. Yeah, and, and it will stay that blue uh, for, forever. It protects, uh, um, it oxidizes the surface and protects against rust. So the bluing looks really good. Mm-hmm. And we've got all these pieces over here. Now we are going to have to uh, assemble the clocks into the, the back plate or the bottom plate first. And this is the back plate here? Correct. Um, let's put on some gloves because we don't want to finger the brass too much. Okay. The oils um, on your hands will actually tarnish the brass. So the great wheel goes in first generally. And we are going to place that right in the bottom hole there. And that is the jagged tooth wheel right there. Let's put that in next. And that's going to go in the top hole. In the top? Yep. And that is the wheel that pushes that pendulum back and forth. Okay. Next, we are going to um, put the gear that you made. That's this just one. Just below the escapement. That's correct. And that's going like this? Exactly. And this has the mesh? 
Correct, you're gonna drop that right in. Lastly, uh, we're gonna drop in the minute wheel. This is the minute wheel? That's the minute wheel. That's the wheel that the hands will be attached to. That wheel turns exactly once an hour. And that's it. Because this is gonna take a little bit of finesse and you're just gonna kind of work it. You want to line it up. Perfect, look at that. All right. Now let's hold it together with uh, the screws that we just blued. Just take it down snug. Beautiful. Wonderful, all right. I'll go ahead and stand it up and let's test it. Now go ahead and give that bottom gear a turn and see, see what happens right there on the outside. Whoa. Look at that. You slide it on. We're just testing the fit right now. Okay. And that is the, um, the sleeve that the, um, it will be fastened to the hour wheel. And then the hour hand this goes on like presses that. right on to that, correct. We'll test fit the minute hand to see how it fits on to the, the shaft there. Um, and then that's held on with a, a little washer. Okay. So, yeah. And what keeps that, the hour hand from just... Well, it's geared. There, there are some dropping. additional... Yeah, there is more assembly involved. Um, there's okay. the whole hour minute hand uh, gearing ratio um, that is fastened to the front plate. Well, that's beautiful. I mean, just extraordinary. Thank you. My wife's currently working in her studio upstairs if you'd like to meet her. Yeah, let's go up there, man. Right this way. I like the staircase, the spiral staircase yeah. is cool. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Jennifer? Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Eric. I've heard so much about you. What are you working on? I'm just drawing in my sketchbook a little bit. So do you do a lot of, of engraving? My... I do, I do. I engrave a little bit on Nate's clocks. I've done some of the dials and number work. And eventually would like to get more engraving the gears and weight shelves and things like that. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. And what a cool, it's a cool opportunity for you two. You know, it's very oh, it's unique. perfect, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't imagine. Uh, a better fit to really to be able to work together and collaborate on so many projects is, is just perfect. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur and work for yourself? Oh yeah, I would say it kind of uh, runs through my veins um, and th really through my family as well. Um, you know, I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. You know, my parents are, and most of my relatives, aunts and uncles, many of them are entrepreneurs. So um, it, it was, I wouldn't say it's almost expected, but it certainly uh, wasn't uh, shocking. And how about for you? Was it, was that something that you thought you would end up doing? Never. No? <laughs> No, I grew up with uh, everybody in my family had nine to five jobs and you're going to go to college and you're going to get a degree and I did. But when we got married, um, I just really believed in what he wanted to do and he needed someone to help. And we just made that decision together that I was going to be part of the business. And it's been exciting that we can incorporate engraving into his clocks as well. So. It's, it's just been a really great fit for both of us. I'd like you to, to tell me about what you think of your legacy and how you see it. My clocks are hopefully something that will be around for a couple hundred years. So, uh, and so hopefully I'm remembered and people admire my work and remember me in that way. Um, I also very much uh, desire to be influential and um, kind of renewing interest in my, my craft um, I, I view it as a, a declining and an um, in art that is quickly disappearing. And so, yeah, I, I would love to, um, to be viewed as an inspiration and influential in that regard. I worked on a little something for you. I know that you like watches and I oh. engraved this for you with a Craftsman's Legacy logo. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Something That's uh, to take with you and remember your visit. Thank you so much. You're it's welcome. so nice. It was such a, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. you Thank have. you very much. I, Happy I, to have you. I've been gifted a new perspective of time. 
after spending two days working with a man who handcrafts fine clocks. I've witnessed his passion and dedication firsthand. This has been an honor for me, and I thank Nate for that gift.